going to show us how this works. So tell us how, how you proceed. Okay, so this very tiny scope is going to go into Nick's nose. We're going to start on the right side. Mm -hmm. We're going along the bottom of the nose. Does it hurt, Nick? Not at all. Really? And you have a little bit of antiseptic, a little, in, spray. A little spray in the nose. And is, is this a risky procedure in any way, Dr. Rivera? No. The, all the risk of upper endoscopy are because of sedation. Uh, over sedation or under sedation can lead to heart problems, uh, stroke, other problems, stopping breathing. Uh -huh. So uh, we avoid that completely with this technique. So what are we seeing okay, here? Okay, what you're seeing now are the vocal cords open. Nick, say mm -hmm. E, e and then sniff. So give me three E and then a sniff. E. E, E. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, that's mm -hmm. where the tongue is. At mm -hmm. the top of the screen, at 12 o'clock, is where the esophagus opens. So I'm going to have Nick try to swallow. And, and he's swallowing right now. That opens the esophagus, and I'm in the esophagus. It's hard to believe Nick isn't gagging or anything. Though. When you swallow, you abolish the gag reflex. So we're taking advantage of normal physiology. Nick, can I trouble you to drink some water? And Tim, let me ask you, you don't have a sore throat after this? No, not much of a one. Uh, you may have a little irritation afterward. Uh, but it does avoid uh, the conscious sedation, water, which as Dr. Aviv says is the major issue Perfect. for the other procedure. Okay, so the water's coming down. I'm gonna follow the water down mm -hmm. into the esophagus mm -hmm. here. And what you're gonna see in a second at about seven o'clock on the screen is this precancerous lesion, which is called Barrett esophagus. So, Nick, again, uh, actually, just swallow your saliva. Good. Okay, here it comes. There it is, that little pink island. Where is it? Where? You're uh, going to see it again. Okay. Here it is, right there, opening up right there. Oh, right there, that's that small thing on the side. Yeah, the like salmon-colored island, if you will. Now, right. we're going to go into the stomach now. Uh, can you swallow a little more water? Okay, why you're doing this, Dr. V, because I want to point out again that little bread. We're in the stomach. Bread, right. And you can see changes. You can see the Barrett. Uh, no, uh, now we're in the, in the, yeah, we're, we're in the stomach now. Uh huh. And everything looks good. We've just retroflexed. So the scope is bent back on itself so right. we could see where the scope enters the stomach. Okay, I want everybody at home to know this is it now, really, and you can come right back out. It's going to come out pain-free. And Tim, if you found Barrett, and this is so key, please tell everybody mm. about this. If you have found it, what do you do? You are then going to have follow-up, basically, for the rest of your life, uh, usually with a gastroenterologist. They will keep an eye on it. They will biopsy it. Okay, if it starts to change into early cancer, they will uh, leap into action, either with uh, maybe a surgical procedure. Today, they also use radio frequency. But the point is, this is a precursor of cancer, so you have to follow it with yearly exams the rest of your life. And diet, very important. Alcohol, watch the alcohol, watch your weight. Yep. Anything uh, else? Well, smoking, excessive alcohol, and obesity, which increases the reflux. All of those are lifestyle issues that lead to an increased risk for this cancer. Okay. We're, we're about to do our biopsy. Oh, you really are. <laughs> well, again, it's not painful. You can do it fast, and it can save your life. We're going to be doing more on this because of the fast rise in esophageal cancer.